What's up guys, Michael Turk here. In this video, I wanted to talk about the temptations that come with being a division one college football player. And I wanted to be real with you guys because I think this is such an important topic. And whether you play football or not, we're all susceptible to these temptations. But really, there are some things that as a division one football player are magnified in some really easy ways to go astray. So if that interests you at all, please stick around for the whole video. If you're new to my channel, I play punter here for the Sun Devils and I make videos relating to football and all sorts of things. So if that interests you at all, please consider subscribing. With that being said, let's get right to the video. All right, so first of all, I don't just mean the obvious infractions like getting a DUI or going to a party and getting in a fight and you know, getting in serious trouble and getting kicked off the team or failing a drug test, right? Those are obvious infractions that'll get you in trouble, but um, I would list that as part of the temptation that comes along with being a D1 football player. But really, I mean more of the, the sins whether you believe in God or not, I do, I'm a Christian, um, the sins that we're going to be held accountable for on the day of judgment, right? Because God has made us in his image. We all have a conscience, whether you believe in God or not, we all have a conscience and we know things um, are wrong inherently as humans. A lot of things God has written on our hearts. So the sins that I'm talking about, sexual immorality, lying, stealing, um, being prideful, right? That's a big one for D1 football players. Um, and we're going to talk about that. All right. So the first sin, sexual immorality. This is obviously a huge one and being in college, you know, kids are younger, more in the time of life where they're better looking and as a football player, you have the sort of persona that you're someone special on campus. You are, especially on the bigger schools, like if you're playing for Tennessee um, football or even, you know, Arizona State football, it's like kind of a big deal and people look at you a different way. And so, not so much the punter, but anyway, it's a big deal and so it's a lot easier for you to fall into that sin because when you um, have that clout you could say it's just easier to get girls. Also in college a lot of kids are finally away from home so there's a lot more autonomy to fall into this sin and have sort of no restraint on it, right? There's no one uh, per se watching you. There's no one controlling you day to day actions. Yes, you have an obligation to be at practice in the mornings. You had your schoolwork but on your own time if you want to uh, meet up with however many girls you're able to get, right? You can fall into that sin. And now in this day and age with social media, if you just are on the football team, you could just about, I'm not saying I do this, so I'm not saying I could do this, okay? I'm just speaking in general terms here for this video. You can just about message uh, any girls and you, most of the time you'll, you'll get a response, right? And I'm, again, I'm not saying I do this, I'm just saying that's the reality. I wanted to be real in this video. And so that could be a head trip for one, the football player, and then two, the reality is it's going to lead to a lot of sexual immorality and sexual sin unrestrained. You see, God made men and women to be uniquely um, bonded together in marriage. That is the only time sexual relations is okay. But outside of marriage, outside of that covenantal relationship, it's considered a sin. So that's obviously the first huge one. Now, I don't want to have an exhaustive list of sins, but the second biggest one, I think, is the sin or the temptation of thinking that the entire world, the entire universe revolves around you and that you're more important than anybody else. And see, this is the most insidious sin to fall into because one, it's the same sin that got Satan cast out of heaven, right? Being prideful. And two, once you realize that you're not as important as you thought you actually are, it actually leads to a lot of depression and leads to a lot of identity crisis, right? And so uh, if you look at college football players and how, we're, again, we're put on a pedestal because football is, is virtually idolized in America, and we're at almost the pinnacle of the sport, it is easy to think that you are more important than you are. The Bible says that prideful people are an abomination to God because uh, our duty as humans, our duty as the creation, not the creator, is to be humble and actually give God the glory. And going along with this theme of thinking you're so important, there are a lot of kids on campus who actually do put you on a pedestal. Therefore, it's easier for a college football player to get dragged into bad scenarios, certain parties that only exclusive people are allowed to come to, certain cliques or certain groups of people. It's easier for a football player to weeble their way in there because no one's gonna not want them there. They're sort of a special person given the fact that they're on the university football team. So what's the good news in all this? Well, the good news in all this is like the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide an escape so that you can stand up under, under it. And so the word of God is saying that all these sins that we face as a division one football player, or if you face as a just a regular student, um, it's all common to man. 
and through the power of God, you can actually overcome that sin. And this is nothing new. Satan has been tempting men and women since the very beginning of time. Adam and Eve got tempted by Satan, and they chose the foolish choice of obeying Satan. You see, Satan wants us to think that sin is actually better for us than serving God and somehow can fulfill us. And obviously we know that we only have true joy and fulfillment and righteousness in Christ alone. So now as I find myself in college as a football player, I do not have the mindset, oh, Jesus died for me, now I can do whatever I want. Rather, like Romans 8 says, it says, Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put, the, put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And you see, that's the key. Um, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can actually overcome sin. And it's actually no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. This is a total transformation, and that's the very definition of being born again. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you overcome sin in your life, whether you're a Division I football player or not. And I hope you realize that the value of knowing Christ and going to heaven far outweighs the value of sin and going to hell. With that being said, thanks for watching. Please subscribe again once, once again if you're new. Forks up.